relaxed with money. It's not something that stresses me out. When I was younger, I used to get an allowance, and I would save that. And when I'd get my baby bonuses, I was allowed to keep that to myself. I guess I've always sort of been someone to look farther ahead with money. Um, a million dollar sound does sound a lot. Everything comes down to being financially responsible with your money. But as I got older, you learn how to spend your money wisely. I'm not in debt right now, and a lot of that has to do with a lot of the big kind of purchases or lifestyle choices I've made, I plan for in advance. So I was saving up all through high school so that I could go to university um, debt free. And I managed to, you know, over say three years of working several part time jobs and summer jobs, save up about $8,000 or so, so that when I started university, I had a buffer and then I continued to work throughout university. Debt right now, no. And I plan on not having debt in the future. I do have debt. I have uh, about uh, $20,000 in student loans left to pay off. I had about $25,000 and have slowly been working away at that. Most of the debt that I do have was due to, like, you know, my teenage years and being, like, really silly with my decisions. Credit has led to debt in such a significant way. Um, I think it's something that I have learned a lesson from and I will now not rely on credit the way that I have in the past. I have debt and it doesn't really affect my life right now because the, the credit people haven't found me yet. <laughs> but I'm sure once they find me, it's probably going to start ruffling up some feathers and stuff. I think it's a lot harder to get out of debt than it is to get into debt. And so I think that um, the fear would be of owing more than I have to give. Um, in my life, I've dealt with about 50 collection agencies. They're very annoying. <laughs> they call you constantly. They find all your numbers and they will call you and they're trained to be very aggressive on the phone. I've learned over time. They're very rude and it gets me upset and then I get rude back, right? But then at the end of it, I do owe the money. But to be very honest, at the time when I couldn't even pay back anything, in my mind, I would always think, I only owe money, they're not gonna come arrest me, I don't care. Yes, I've dealt with a collection agency actually. Um, kind of have one following me right now, so and so I have them programmed in my phone as do not answer. So <laughs> that's kind of how I'm dealing with it right now. And uh, I'll deal with them as soon as I, you know, start having more funds coming in. But right now it's just, like I said, putting it on the back burner, but I'm not forgetting about it. What I do recommend um, for youth out there is if you do fall into a situation where you are in a collection agency, always try to make some kind of a agreement with them. Because by making that agreement, you're showing that you're responsible, number one, and number two, that you're actually gonna come through with what you're gonna do. So if, even if it's $10 a month or $10, uh, $5 a month, at least you're making a commitment with them and that's what they wanna see. I believe actually would probably be in my best interest to like go ahead and get my credit report so that way I can actually start working on paying my debt off and exactly knowing really how much I owe the government because they just keep taking my taxes away all the time now, so obviously I know I owe them quite a bit. Not really too sure exactly what, but I think it's kind of up there in, I don't know, thousands. When I was going to college, I needed to apply for OSAP, and I really wanted to see where my credit was at at that point, because when I originally applied for OSAP, they said that I was denied because of arrears in my credit history. So I had to go back to my credit um, history, so I called Equifax, and it's really simple. All you do is call them, give them information, and it takes about three to four days. You get it in the mail, and it basically tells you every um, place, business, or corporation that, that you owe to. And it tells you from what period to what period, and it tells you your scoring as well. So the higher the score your, your higher the score is, the better it is, but the lower your score is, the worse it is. So my score was really low. <laughs> I don't have a credit card. Why I don't have a credit card? 
because I'm a person who actually has bad credit, so they don't like to give credit cards to people like me. But there's loopholes with that nowadays. You can get those prepaid pet credit cards. So that's actually next on my list because I noticed that if you have credit, people tend to like, you know, um, treat you a bit more with respect as opposed to a person who has no credit and, you know, can't really do a lot in the city with not having a credit card. Credit cards are just a waste. If you don't have the money, why do you have a credit card? you rather just save the money that you have rather than putting it into the credit card and falling into that cycle. Yes, I have a credit card, but I don't use it. I try not to spend money I don't have, so if I'm putting any charges on my credit card, it's often for convenience sake, um, because it's easier at a particular vendor or restaurant or wherever to put it on. But I always try to pay back before they'll end up charging me interest, um, because the interest rates are so high that, um, you know, paying an extra 17% on any purchase seems sort of silly. And when I maxed them, my dad had the money and he said to me, okay, I'm gonna pay them off. You're not gonna get them anymore, because I was just basically paying them off spending them again, maxing them out. It was just like a cycle that I was going through and it wasn't helping me in any way. So my dad basically paid them off and cut them up. Um, all of my friends and young people are using credit cards quite frequently. And I think it is really just the framework of our society, the way we think about money and the way we think about debt. It's just an accepted thing and, and you'll have debt for your whole life and you just deal with it. in-between kind of shopper you know sometimes I'll find those bargains where you know I'll save like a heck load of money on on stuff I tend to try to buy locally and as much as possible I try to buy organically um, I'm really trying to be conscious of where things are coming from so not just what a product looks like but the process that it's taken to come to the market uh, basically as a shopper I just shop and what I see out in the world and you know if I see something I like I'll buy it I think that, to an extent, I'm an educated consumer, but I, I don't think I've done enough in terms of broadening that education and trying to figure out how to spend money in the ways that are most um, effective and that are least harmful for society. Everywhere I go, people tell me I'm a hustler, but I'm not. I just try to get a good deal because, I mean, I'm on my face. Like, I don't have any money, so... I'll buy the cheapest things. I don't support brand names because why am I gonna be spending $60 extra on something that's pretty much almost the same? It just has a logo on it. I don't need that. I'm a pretty big fan of Craigslist and other ways to maximize the resources that are already circulating in society. So secondhand, um, trades. Electronics and stuff like that, I'll pay more money for because it's more of an investment to me, it's more of an investment than something that you'll just wear a couple times, get it stained and have to throw away. Any sales pitch which bothers me is one that, you know, speaks to me and says, you have to have this. Anything that someone's trying to tell me what I need to buy or what I need to, to consume, I get frustrated with those ads. I watched an infomercial. I couldn't, I couldn't get to sleep one night and I, it was probably about one o'clock in the morning and an infomercial for Yoga Booty Ballet came on. And they, they made it seem like you'd get so fit right quick. It doesn't work. I bought it, I gave in. It's now sitting on my shelf collecting dust. Um, I live with roommates and we don't have a shared landline, so my cell phone is my main mode of communication besides email. Once you have a cell phone, you can't go without one. The reason why I believe I need the cell phone is because I'm never home. I'm always on the run. I'm either at school, work, placement, friend's house, so no one can ever catch me. So I think the phone's very important to have because I do have to keep in touch with a lot of people. Cell phone, yeah, I do have one. Uh, it's not in service right now. I, I go pay as you go, so I don't have to uh, pay my debt back. I do feel it's a need, but at the same time, it's very expensive and they need to make better plans for students because it's just ridiculous. I spend over $150 per month on my cell phone. And I did call and try to cancel, but they put me through to their customer retention service, which is nearly impossible to get off the phone with without renewing your contract. So they've given me a fairly good deal and they knocked off a bunch of the charges. At this point, I feel it is a need. I can't imagine living without it now, but um, it is frustrating. I find that it's so difficult to keep bills low. Um, there's, there's limits on when you can talk and you get 
charged so much money during the day if you're talking the day and um, anytime you tend to roam I travel a lot so if I'm out of country I, I'm texting and get charged these exorbitant amounts and get quite frustrated with it um, but overall I mean it's still I still feel like I need to have it <laughs> should distill into that you know money is how you get through life and how you're able to further yourself and better yourself but as you get older you should also be able to teach yourself you should le learn from your own mistakes if you spend too much money one week because you went out partying or you bought this expensive outfit you should be able to learn from your mistakes and say okay well I can't do that you know maybe I'll treat myself and I'll just put some money away every pay because all in all, you need your money to last you, otherwise you can't have what you want. So it is a very good idea to start investing and in teaching younger students how to invest.